All right, this is the What's Next podcast, Houston's number one platform where I invite creatives to share their journeys and give us a depiction of their visions. Most importantly, the last question I'll ask is, what's next? Houston, Texas, this is episode 77. You already know what I came to do. We're in August. I hope you're ready, dog. Talking to the big boys now. Hey. Let's go. Yo, I feel like 95. Uh. Sachi on my body. Biggie chicken puffin'. Houston, Texas, you already know what I came to do. I came to podcast. Let's get it. Now that's these behind me. My crystal ball, I see crystal. I crystal y'all with that. Welcome back. Welcome back to episode number 77. Of the What's Next podcast, a production of Still Visionary, Inc. My name, my lovely name, is John Ross Dyke the First. Let's cut that right quick. So uh, before we get started with the episode, T, let's introduce our social media handles so we don't disrupt the flow of the conversation when we get to that point. Um, mine is at Terrence Farmer, T-A-R-E-N-C-E. Okay. You know how to spell former. Okay. Okay. Houston, Texas. Let me show them how it's done. Again, my name is John Ross Dyke the first. <laughs> and you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at John Ross Dyke and still underscore visionary. If you would connect with me on LinkedIn, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my fan page on Facebook and visit my website at stillvisionary.com. Directly in front of you, I have all of my paraphernalia. I got a new line coming soon and you can shop still visionary dot com slash apparel how you doing i'm great how about yourself <laughs> you look just like your dad all right <laughs> you look just like your dad houston texas we got the family in the building today my wife is here his wife is here his daughter's here my niece is here it's time let's get it this is where i want to start this new segment of the podcast is called is it a vibe featuring my man trey rogers Crack don't uh, cook yourself, paper uh, request, stuff it in the book, tuck it on the shelf, let it marinate, and don't uh, come back, it's still you need it, even with a breathing treatment, in a endless nigga breathing, parmesan face cook with all that cheese, and fuck up your season, get my head on a reason, easy, easy, tobacco smoke in the fire, I can tell you won't none, count no fun, say get the grass and the franks and the wife come home to the one, come home to the one, already stay in Phoenix, I live on the sun, if I tell her walk to me, baby girl run, been had dog looking for a side piece, like where's my Smoke, politic and bigger heist with the kin folk. They already know how the shit go. The bird is in curse of the brim low. The plan is in motion. The hands of a fist, ten foes, and the Chevy on my dip low. We never die like the wind blow. Tinted on the ops. Chino on the wheel. Had a summer on the ops. Is it a vibe? Panic. Rocks in the cut. Juice fucking with the shots. AZ on the map. Big slaps on the pop. Boys hate these days. Can't let a nigga knock. Gotta pull strings when you try to get a knot. I ain't worried about a drop. Nights on the climb when you headed for the lot. Sports in the top ten plays. 25 8. Mr. Go and in the bag every day. Play a pad. Space, play me in your ear, more taste. Hitting for the shot, no chase. Truck full of bass, like you, we call Frank and said, Big brother, fuck him. Let's ball and parlay every day. It's a wave, my nigga. So, wave completed the mission and stuck to the vision. And now life is late. Again, Houston, Texas, that segment of the podcast is entitled Is It a Vibe? Featuring my man Trey Rogers, and the name of that record is called The One, featuring Forrest Mild. The Ones. So, uh, listen, man, uh, this is going to be a very special podcast. For a couple of reasons. This podcast is all about bringing creatives out in their journeys, getting an idea of why they started, where they started, what they hope to attain from starting and um, the process. Right. So a lot of times when people come on the podcast, they've already started everything. They've got it going. They've seen what it is to be successful. And we're kind of backtracking as to why they did what they did, right? Mm -hmm. In your case, you know, again, Houston, Texas, little backstory. This man right here to my right is my brother. <laughs> he's my brother. He is the brother of my wife, okay? So he's my brother, right? And so we are, we have a text, a family text, and he comes in the text and says, hey, I'm looking for investors. I'm starting my food truck trucking whatever right 
Mm-hmm. I said, there it is. It's podcast time. It is. So, um, again, what I was saying before was that a lot of people come on a podcast and they have already started their journey, right? Um, with you, it's a little differently and we're going to get into it. But first thing I want to ask is what should people take um, from this exact moment, our conversation and what you're planning to do with your, with your new creation? Um, I say people should take the, just the sure process of um, the different levels you have to go through to, uh, to get a business started and uh, hopefully to make it successful and reach the people that you wanted to reach to. Mm, mm, okay. Okay. Um, episode 76 of my podcast was called Believe. And in that episode, I said to myself, or I said to the podcast and my listening audience that you can believe in the process, you can believe in God, you can believe in yourself. But the biggest thing that that is an obstacle in anybody's journey is the belief that they receive from others. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, it's a it's a it's a long journey to get people to buy into what you're trying to do. Have you thought about that obstacle? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the that's the main obstacle that people go through and think about it before they even start a business. Okay, um, I think the the sure doubt of you know not reaching the people that you want to reach to mm. is the reason why people don't make the stuff. Mm. That was well said. Well said. Well said. You, you, this your first podcast? Yeah, this is my first. Okay. Okay. You you, you sound you sound good. Ah, I know it. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> okay, so um, creativity comes from experiences. What do I mean by that? I mean that um, even in the inception of this podcast, it was an experience that I had to go through to um, get to this point, right? Creativity comes from experiences. Take us to the inception of, what's the name of your your joint? Biscuit Head. Biscuit Head. Okay. Take us to the inception of that, where the name comes from, and um, yeah, just take us through that. It's it's funny. It's it's a couple of different things. Um, The first one is when... um, me and Alyssa, we went to Denver last, what, February for my birthday, actually. Yeah. yeah. And we visited a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And this place is called Denver Biscuit Company. And um, we didn't know about it until we got down there. We looked up, looked it up. And it was one of the best experiences that we had. Mm-hmm. The food was great. Um, the drinks was great. The vibe was good. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I thought about it. I was like, we don't have nothing like this in Houston. Not one thing. And, um, and, and the thought at the time was, okay, this would be great to have it in Houston. This mm-hmm. was last February. Mm-hmm. But then again, uh, we revisited just the shirt images of it uh, recently from different people. And so one day I, I told them, let's say, hey, look, I'm going to start making biscuits. Mm-hmm. And what I did was just start, I went to go get the ingredients. I asked one of my chef friends for a simple recipe. And then I tweaked it how I wanted to tweak it, and that's how that became a part. Now the name itself mm-hmm. came from my, comes from my father. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from my father. <laughs> uh, as, you, <laughs> as you know, it was a couple of weeks ago when we was all over there at the house, yeah. and uh, we was just going through you know childhood memories and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and just the different things our dad, my dad. We used to, that's how we say it, my dad. Yeah. Used to call us and uh, just make fun of us. It's just different names he used to. Yeah. He used to yell out. Yeah. And Biscuit Head was one of them. Yeah. So the sure idea of the name of it is is, is, is just uh, an influence from my father. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Biscuit Head. Okay. So um, you said that you were in Denver, y'all. It was a spot out there, right? What did they only serve biscuits or what? No, no, no. I mean, they, they, the whole, the, the restaurant was centered around biscuits, mm-hmm. um, different type of biscuits. They had, they had a French toast biscuit, mm-hmm. um, and then basically they stacked it uh, however you wanted to stack it. You know, they had different, um, different set items where you can get uh, your biscuit prepared and stuff like that, and. Um, like I said, it was it was one of the best experiences that I had. Okay, and and with this, you don't want to start a restaurant. How, how do you want to solicit it? Um, you know, you I want to start small. Uh, okay. I think food truck is probably the the smartest thing to do these days because it's it's mobile for one. Okay. Um, I think it's the most popular wave right now, 
as far as getting your your name out there. I've seen so many food trucks turn into restaurants. And uh, so food truck is probably the, the more efficient way to go right now. Mm. Okay. Biscuit head. Biscuit head. Okay. So um, how far are you in the process of, of creating or starting? Um, I'm pretty far. I I, I got the, the business accounts. I, okay. I I then got the uh, EIA numbers and everything, so it's um, it's moving pretty far, pretty okay. fast. It's okay. just a matter of you know getting the investors and getting people who want to you know jump on board and get the truck running and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Um, so what else is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Um, round of applause for Terrence. <laughs> he just had a kid. He had a kid in May. She's over there asleep. So what else is going on? That. Fatherhood. Okay. And how, how for, okay, so here's the thing. A lot of people, um, creatives that are, have to deal with uh, the aspect in their journey of mm-hmm. parenting, right? Yeah. How is she um, driving you towards this goal of yours with Biscuit Head? Oh, uh, it's, a, it's a whole different movement now. It's okay. a whole different, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? Encouragement to motivation. get out there, motivation. That's okay. it. Okay. Uh, to get out there and do something. Uh, we all like. I was always taught you always want to do better than your parents. Mm. You always want to set up your kids to do better than you. Also, mm-hmm. so um, with just the idea of you know bringing in you know that type of income or the potential to bring in that type of income just to further help your child be successful in this life is mm. the whole idea of it. Okay. Yeah. That was deep. That was deep. Yeah. It's deep. Okay. You see sleep right now in Houston, Texas, and I'm trying to be as quiet as possible because I don't want to wake her. So um, it's a lovely day outside, man. I'm thinking food trucks, um, mobile, you said. Food trucks are also convenient, and it's the thing to do, the trendy thing to do. Um, what, are, what, are the, um, what is the downside of this for you? The downside is... Uh Basically, the downside of any business is you, you put your hard your hard work in a business and it just fails. You know, uh, you, you have this idea of something and then you want it to be successful so bad, but as soon as you get to the point, you know, it's just all crumbled down. And mm-hmm. then, that's the always the downfall in any business. You don't you don't want to you don't want to put all the hard work in into it and just go away. Yeah, I think that uh, when I think about a journey. And, and starting entrepreneurship, it always, the outcome is always something that I've thought about too and, and what that looks like. And I was telling kids this morning, I was like, you know, the reason why um, um, I haven't seen the success that I want to see is I don't know what it looks like, mm-hmm. right? For you, it with Biscuit Head and the creation and the development of it, what does the outcome look like to you? So the outcome in me is a, Biscuit Head is actually a very small stepping stone to my, to my dream, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, Biscuit Head is just a, I say, an entry door to what I want to do, mm-hmm. which is um, I actually want to start a hospitality, hospitality group. Mm-hmm. As you know, a lot of these people, me being in the bar industry, mm-hmm. in this type of industry for the last 10 years, has really inspired me to do something in hospitality. Mm-hmm. And um, with the hospital, with this group is basically – you get these group of investors with the same idea as you, and you basically grow and expand out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with Biscuit Head, it's just something that's so small that could turn into something very big. Mm-hmm. Okay. What song's on your mind? What songs? Mm-hmm. What song, songs? What song is on your mind? Oh, man. What song is on my mind? You know, I've been jamming Pop Smoke pretty, pretty often. Rest in lately. peace. Rest, Rest in, in peace. peace. Rest in peace. Uh I like little baby new stuff too. Mm. Um, what else? What else? Nav, you like Nav? Nav I've, is. I've, under, I've heard of him. He's very underrated. Okay. Yeah, he's a Canada boy. Mm. They're winning right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They are winning right now. <laughs> <laughs> Speak on it. Speak on it, son. <laughs> you know, Speak on it. His, no, is one taking a, a, a huge L. Uh, Who is that? Tory Lanez. He, oh, yeah. Matter of fact, oh. he's taking two L's, I guess, since he, you know, those two shots, not just one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <sighs> I think I think Drake has just grown a fan base that's just very loyal. 
Mm. And um, whatever he puts out is, is necessarily don't miss because the numbers are there. Yeah. But I think it's some of his latest stuff, and when I say latest, I mean the last six years, it's mm. been very overhyped. But yeah. I, I, I thought I thought the same thing too, and so the song that's on my mind, I'm gonna go um, Lion King on Ice, J Cole. Okay. Yeah, because his two pack, and although Drake's two pack wasn't his two pack because they were DJ Khaled records. Yeah, he shouldn't, he shouldn't have put out Grease. Yeah. Uh, uh, here's the thing. I think I think Drake, along with um, and 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 I'm gonna get crucified for this, Drake. Some of the things that Beyonce puts out from time to time. Um, Oprah Winfrey. I think that, you know, when you get to that point of success where Drake said one time, I could probably I could probably sell a blank disc. He, he's and and I think that that might be very well true for him. Mm-hmm. Right. So when I think about the two pack that J Cole dropped and the attention to detail in terms of like the message getting across and J Cole has always been the artist that I could connect to being a college kid myself. Right. Drake, you know, he talks almost how Jay-Z used to talk in his raps about the braggadocious stuff. Like, so I'm, I'm not, you know, too privy to understanding what exactly he's talking about. And so it really doesn't tickle my fancy, but mm-hmm. But J. Cole's Lion King on Ice when he says that um, people wanted me to play the part has to stop, had to stop taking that advice. I was like, okay, I understand. It, on, it almost depicts his transition in the game with wanting to get that huge single so that he would be popular, mm-hmm. then getting that huge single, and then understanding, like, this is not who I am, and let Nas down, the greatest rapper alive, right? <sighs> and then um, how he looks now. You know, Mm -hmm. that type of career where you're still respected but not seen is alluring to me, right? So um, I'm going to go there. But, uh, yeah, Drake's Tupac was just, yeah. Tory Lanez is taking an L, true indeed. But but with that being said, are they looking at the numbers? Like the numbers, if if you're looking at sure numbers, you know, you can't really say Drake is – it's really taking an L. It's yeah, I, I don't think he, he... He can't take an L. Yeah, that's the thing. I he think it's one of those L. things where you get to a point, and I think music is, is of the variety. Um, food is of the variety as well, where they travel really mm-hmm. fast. You know, somebody gets a wind of you, and you're that good with what you do with food and music. It just yeah. can go like that, right? But uh, Drake Kinda is at like, a point. Huh? Not with the food... Uh, sorry to interrupt. With, go ahead, with go, the ahead food, go ahead. Like people... Um, Landry's. Uh, I think Landry's is the biggest... The biggest over most overrated food place <laughs> company, but Tillman has grown a juggernaut, mm. especially here in Houston. I, mm. I think that I think the fact that he's so Houston uh, in many ways that people in Houston is going to support him. Yeah. But uh, Landry's Landry's group mm-hmm. is trash. Mm. But Sawgrass is decent. Yeah. But Landry's group is trash. Give me a top three. Um, Food trucks in the city. Oh man, um, let's say uh, I was a big fan of Waffle Buzz before they became a, uh, a restaurant. Okay. Um, the 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 Memphis Chicken person. I forget the name of it. The Memphis Heat person. Uh, mm, he does I know what you're talking about. They're pretty good. And then uh, the red about- the red chicken or. Yeah, the red chicken guy. Yeah. Okay. And then Taco Nasso. Hey, if this is a very, very discreet uh, taco truck on the north side of Houston, mm-hmm. and it's by far the best tacos in Houston. <laughs> and it's simple too. It, it's no, it's it's meat, and if you want cheese, meat and cheese. Mm-hmm. Right? But it's the the flavor of the meat is just perfect. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they do to it, you know. The language barrier is pretty pretty hard, so I can't really just ask him. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. but uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> if you want some good tacos, street tacos, taco nasso. Okay, off okay. of Padden and Forty Five. Okay, okay, yeah, but um, so uh, was that the idea that you had behind food? Is that what you were about to say about food? You said I, something about I said that food moves a lot faster like those are the yeah, two things no, no, no. no i was just saying i agree with you as far as i was comparing drake to landry's mm. uh as far as the the product that they put out not necessarily match the 
the numbers that they put out. Mm. So the product is, you know, iffy, but the numbers are great. So it's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. 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 Um, are you a fan of the bubble? Uh, basketball? Yeah. Yes. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball should have mimicked it. And look what's happening in baseball now. Yeah. What are, you, uh, what are your predictions for the um, playoffs? The playoffs. Uh, man, it's tough. You know, I don't see anybody beating the Bucks in the East. I don't only match up, sure match up that – the only three teams in the West that have a chance are the Lakers, Clippers, and the Rockets. And the only reason why I throw the Rockets is in there is if they catch if they catch fire, it's nobody stopping them. Not one team. That including the Clippers. If they have another hundred and fifty point nine. Yes. If they <laughs> if they shooting twenty threes and or, or if they're making twenty threes a game, yeah, you're not stopping that team. Yeah. But because um, nobody else can shoot with them. Uh, as much as I like Paul George and and Kawhi Leonard, you know, even LeBron, you know, LeBron is my favorite player. Is he? They they cannot. I said um, as he is. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, is he the he best in the league? Yeah, yes, he's he's still the best in the league. Mm. That's okay. Still. Okay. And he proved it. I would he hope just, that. Listen, this is a disclaimer. I would hope that LeBron. Um, Saw this podcast one day and decided to invest in my podcast. So I'm going to keep my thoughts of LeBron and him being the best player in the league to myself. Continue on. Uh, I think the, just to give you uh, evidence of how he is the best. Uh, did you watch the Clippers Lakers game? Yeah, I did. Did you see the last 10 seconds? of it? Like, oh, let me put the last 15 seconds. What was your what was your major argument about LeBron James? Now, it's still the same argument. What is I what, think that you guys I think that you guys allow the full quarter block in the 2017 NBA finals um the fact that he held D Rose in one possession that year the D Rose was MVP the fact that you know he does a chase down block and it does it so magnificently I think that y'all let that cloud the fact that LeBron James is actually a defender. You got to remember this. Hold on. You got to remember this. Okay. Remember this. And a lot of people as a coach. Okay. I preach the aspect of not only um, being present the whole game, but that last two minutes of the fourth quarter is where the ball game is made. Right. And so if you're going to um, use that in your argument as the last 15 seconds, LeBron James was this, this, what is that? I think ten time first team all defender. I disagree. You disagree. I disagree. So when it came down to the last shot, okay, the clutch shot, okay, you put it in Kawhi's Leonard's hand. Who you think is what? What you think Kawhi is right now in the league? Top three. Top three. Top three. Top three four. Top five for sure. Top five for Top sure. Top five for sure. Is mm-hmm. LeBron outside of that five or inside that five? Inside the five, of course. He five. would have to be. He's like Drake. So he's so. like Drake, <laughs> and he, he's like Drake. And and if you if you're listening to this episode, you understand what I mean by that. He's like Drake. And the funny thing about that game was they finally put him in his natural position. He's a point guard. He's not a small forward. He's not a forward. He's a point guard. And so I think that if he's in his right position as a point guard. Then the allure of this six eight guy who's passing the ball all willy nilly and can pass the ball kind of dies down a little bit because a point guard is supposed to pass the ball. He's also averaging twenty eight points career wise. It's easy to do when the ball is always in your hand well, and you get to control the tempo of the game. So he is it, is it not is that not easy to do if if the ball is always in if the ball is always in your hand. And you have the the opportunity to either pass or shoot the ball. You can do that at any command, at any instance. Is that not, you know? So why wasn't Magic Johnson like that? Uh, I really didn't watch Magic Johnson play because Magic oh, Johnson was at, a true point guard. You, oh, so LeBron? You just said LeBron was a true. He's point a point guard. point guard. He's a point guard, but I'm, that doesn't mean he's so, not like John Stockton. So we have a so we have different types of point guards. We have a true point guard. Then we have LeBron James point guard. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I would say so. 
And again, this is not a sports podcast, y'all. It's not. It's not a sports podcast. I'm I'm not I'm not the you know, in fact, the reason why we went from the Who Cares podcast to the What's Next podcast is that very instance. My sports takes might be a little bit biased. It is very. okay. Okay, but um this is not a sports podcast, so I don't I don't endorse any of my opinions when it comes to sports. I have my <laughs> viewpoints, I have what I believe to be true, okay? But I know this. Paul George had 30-some points that night. Yeah, he did. Kawhi Leonard had 30-some points that night. Um, AD had 34 points that night, and LeBron had 16. But because of a miscue on defense, what do I mean by that? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you don't, you're not cutting me off. This is, this is what we're here to do. Let's, let's, what we, uh, let's rewind it back just it, even further to, to the Lakers' last shot. Okay. What was your biggest argument about LeBron James again? What the fact the fact that he doesn't he doesn't take the last shot. Exactly. He, so he he actually He's not Kobe Bryant, who is the greatest Laker to ever wear the uniform. Debatable. Okay. okay. Rest in peace to Debatable. a legend. Debatable. Okay. He is the greatest Laker to ever wear the uniform, in my opinion. Okay. That's, and that's debatable. Okay. That's very debatable. The reason why you have you have a, a guy, Magic Johnson, who won how many rings? Five. Five. Same number as who else? Kobe Bryant. All right. Okay. Then we have we have the most the the guy with the most points ever in the NBA and who? Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, right? Okay. And how many he went with the Lakers? Five. No, I don't think he six. won. Six. Six. It's I think it's either five or six. One of them. Somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is not a sports podcast, Houston, Texas. So you have two guys. Okay. Very, very much so, if not achieve the same level as Kobe Bryant, if not more, right? My man Kendall Babin said that Portland will be scary in the playoffs, and I agree. Because they have their number, double zero. No. No. <laughs> Portland would be scary in the playoffs. Yeah, they I will. think Portland is losing right now. No, um, we we can fact check that, but we're not going. Go ahead, fact check. Listen, so um, the what's next podcast, right? Uh, oh, okay, back. okay. Back. It's ninety six ninety five, ten twenty nine in the fourth quarter. But the what's next podcast is all about showcasing the local talent. Oh, wrong button. Sorry. My mom said to me. You know, sweetheart, one day you should settle down and marry... So a this is my homegirl, Demaria Daniels. She has a record entitled Boss You Up. I normally start the episode off with this record, but... <laughs> with my whole slogan to support the local artists, it doesn't matter when I play it, as long as it gets played. Yeah. This is, this is, you know... You know what we came to do. At least me. I came to support the local artists. I'm from the city. She's from the city. Terrence B. Farmer's from the city. Houston, Texas. This is episode number 77. Let's go. Uh. I know when a downbeat comes. Houston. I won't show up for free, I only come for money If you own it, then let me know If you wanna show, send my fee before Ask ask me for a quote Yeah, I deserve it, baby Don't try to short me, baby That's interest on your payment Highly educated uh. Top 10, I graduated Hustle is my profession Trying to teach you a lesson Come in classes, now in session You in the right location Put you in the right direction Yeah, man, so um, I want to say no matter the outcome Of Biscuit Head uh, I'm all down for the journey I'm proud of the journey I'm proud of you for embarking in that journey of starting that because um, for me, I've got an affinity, an affinity for creation, an affinity for the journey. And um, I'm going to support you in any way that I can. I so, that. so, so, so in cooking these biscuits, how are you, how are you going to start off first? Are you going to start off with another biscuit and then work your way to your individual own created biscuit? 
Or how are you going to start off with the biscuit? And what 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 is the menu looking like? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Houston, Texas. I'm gonna tell you one time, and, and my wife is here, so it ain't no lying. I'm, I'm trying to be as honest as possible. Alyssa's here, ain't no lying. I'm trying to be honest as possible. My niece is sleep, ain't no lying. I'm trying to be honest as possible. Terrence Farmer, okay, Houston, Texas. Terrence Farmer, of the farmers that I know. This is including my mother-in-law. Love you, love you, mommy. <laughs> Uh, this is including my wife, Terrence Farmer of those three cooks the best gumbo. Okay. And listen, when, when, when that red button is off and I go home and my wife is talking to me and she's like, Oh, you like Terrence's, um, gumbo, huh? Oh, you like this, huh? I'm going to feel it then, but I got to speak the truth. Where are you going to start with these biscuits? <laughs> <laughs> Cause the next time we come on, we got to have some. No, I mean, um, I. Right now, I've uh, worked with three different types of biscuits. Um, actually, one of them is the jalapeno cheese, which my sister, mm. and your wife, okay. um, has suggested in a, in a group chat. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. ran a trial run not too long ago, and Alyssa over here, she tried them. Okay. She gave me a thumbs up. Okay. Um, then there's just a regular biscuit, you know. Then, then I have a honey butter biscuit, which is, you know, it came out pretty well also. Okay. Now, okay. now the design of the menu will um, it will it will play on to you have to build around the biscuit mm. either in between or whatever you want in between as far as sandwich wise or anything around it. So what you'll do is you basically come to the window and uh, you say you want this certain type of biscuit, and then uh, then there you can say you want to add chicken, add egg, egg whatever you want to um, that we're providing on the menu, and then from there you just you know build it how you want to build it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I neglected to say at the beginning of the episode, rest in peace to Breonna Taylor. Rest in peace to George Floyd. Rest in peace to Ahmaud Arbery, Rayshard Brooks, Elijah McCain. Uh, rest in peace to Vanessa Guillen. Um, we're still looking for justice for Breonna Taylor. Um, in episode number, I'm trying to think of the name. Um, it was an episode that I did with my homegirl, Kalea Vaughn. She said that um, as an artist in 2020 with everything is going on, it's important for an artist to um, have art and depict art that is relevant to the time. Yeah. How do you think that your biscuits or your the biscuit head brand and company is related to 2020 and what we're going to going through as a race? Um, I'd say determination. You know, we, we we all I think we determined to be one, mm. and uh, with the idea of the biscuit head is just that we we all gonna come together as a society and mm. support one person. Okay, and that doesn't matter what race you are, whether it's black, white, Hispanic, blue, green, yellow. Um, I'm designing a company where everybody's welcome. But with that being said, is it is it's it's going to be a monarcher for people of color also, and when I say that, as far as kids, you know, just to to give them a, another avenue of hey, you can do this if you want to. And I look at my nephew and um, in this aspect, as far as influencing him, that um, there's other ways and other entities that you can reach out to people and actually enjoy loving doing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what else, man? I mean, you know, this is the inception, so it's a great start to me um, for the podcast. But what else do you have to give us before we wrap the podcast? I think I want to play one more record for you, if you don't mind. Go ahead. I just love this record. I just love this record. Hey, Trey Rogers, I want you to know, man, it's it's, it's long overdue. It's long overdue for us, man. You didn't had two albums come out now, and we ain't just dissected any of them. Let's go, man. Here we go. Dreaming about the S550. Shift it swiftly. Uh. Screaming fuck 12, come get me. Dash 160. Dreams on epiphany while my passenger dipped in Dior and Tiffany's. Ghetto soliloquies brought life to new energies. Baddies would be like, nigga, please. Now they be like, yes, indeed. Panties drop at various speeds. Then I hit the streets and search for the keys. Slave and trying to set my niggas free. Mm. Call them more than the price I pay with my life. Overtime and long nights. 
race, racing more than life. A lot of wrong turns trying to get us right. Mama said, Pop would be proud. Imagine the sight. Uh, yeah. Imagine the sight. New 11s for my son to get his jumper right. Woo! Gentleman's demeanor, but the flow to mean is. See, the finally made his way up out the cliff. Diamond chandeliers in the blue and here. Like we knew in here. Asking, Asking they say is what they doing, doing here. Bigger goals and bigger dreams, and we pursuing here. Yeah, that's what we doing here. I will let it go to the second verse, but we don't have the time. That's what we doing here. So, uh, most importantly, the last question I'll ask is, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Today is August the second, yeah. 2020. We have 153 days left in the 2020 year. What do you hope to attain in 153 days? Uh, 153 days. Yeah. Um, get all my licenses out the way. Okay. You know, that's the main thing. Um, I think the the purchasing of the, the food truck itself is probably going to be big in the next six months also. So yeah. um, get those two things out of the way in the next 153 days. You yeah. Say? Yeah. It's probably the biggest thing. Okay. Okay. Most importantly, the last question I'll ask is, what's next? What's next? <laughs> I'm going to let you know, I, I mentioned earlier the mm-hmm. hospitality group. Mm-hmm. Um, my next idea on the next venture that I'm going to take is uh, Whiskey Locker. Okay. And it's going to be an upscale whiskey lounge. Okay. And that's the, that's, the, that's the projection I want to go with. Know, starting with biscuit head okay hospitality okay um so uh a token of the podcast <laughs> what i like to do man is i like to come to people's establishment i thank you for opening up your establishment for me to set up and i like to bring the exclusive what's next podcast well the exclusive svi t-shirt for everybody every creative that comes on the podcast and the exclusive what's next podcast t-shirt as All a right. gift from me to you i appreciate that very much okay I no will doubt. give something back, but this is my house. You welcome to anything. Oh no doubt. Listen, family is family. Family is family. Listen, we got Madison Grace Farmer here, Terrence Farmer here, Alyssa, Kizzy, myself, Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, man. Oh, most importantly, listen, my mother's birthday is is drop day, the fourth. Bobby Dyke's birthday is the sixth, y'all. I love my people. Happy birthday to my mother. Happy birthday to my little brother. Houston, Texas, I do what I do for myself to prove that I can do it for others. Peace and blessings.